Join the Music Universe podcast for this special social media extra from CRS 2021. Hi guys, welcome back to the Music Universe podcast covering CRS 2021 virtually. I'm Buddy Jan, your host today. Matt is a uh, out again, but uh, I have Dave Herrera with me, and uh, he's got uh, quite a quite a couple of new songs that are interesting to say the least. I know I've uh, enjoyed them. Um, the Nashville, I- I'm based in Los Angeles myself, and uh, uh, the Nashville one though really struck me because I was just there a few months ago, and uh, it's really cool to see the the city lit up and then you kind of doing your thing around there. Tell us about uh, the new single and then the one that precedes it. Hello, CRS 2021. Uh, thanks for having me on the show as well. I'm Dave Herrera. Um, we have a new single out called Visiting Nashville. It's about my experience uh, in Nashville when I visited in September of 2019. And um, I just want to thank everybody in Nashville for uh, how, how warm they were. And um, the experience just touched uh, uh, and left an inspiration on me. And I thought I would take my experience, consolidate it down to a three minute and 20 second song. If you haven't been to Nashville, listen to the song Visiting Nashville, get motivated and go visit. <laughs> and thank everybody that's uh, a native uh, from Tennessee that calls Nashville home because um, they are opening the doors to their home and allowing us to come in and have a great time in uh, downtown Broadway, the Grand Ole Opry, the Ryman Theater. Yeah, and did you, um, I presume you just filmed that during the pandemic. What were the, uh, how did that go? Because, I mean, it had to be, be kind of stressful. Yeah, so the song, okay, so when I visited Nashville, I, I, it's, it's, it was very diverse. The demographic of people there were wonderful. I mean, you have people from shorts uh, to T-shirts and people dressed up and others were in cowboy boots, et cetera. So um, when we were there, uh, you, you have music everywhere if you haven't been there. Um, you'll have bars, uh, three-story, four-story honky-tonks, and on the ground floor, you'll have a live music venue um, with musicians playing. And then you go to the second floor, it could be a DJ playing rap music. So what I try to do with Visiting Nashville is combine and make it more of a uh, cross-pollination song, uh, incorporating the country elements in with slightly uh, a a little bit of a top 40 feel so that you could play that in the club, make it a little bit diverse. That that was my feeling on on my experience um, with Nashville there. It's open for everybody. But when we filmed that video, it was uh, during the pandemic, correct? So uh, parts of it were filmed in Nashville and some parts of it weren't just because of uh, travel restrictions and everything. Yeah, I I was there uh, back in uh, November, so a month before the bombing, honestly, and uh, had a different feel from when I lived there 10 years ago for two years. Um, You're right, you know, anywhere you go there, there's music, music, music. Uh, Each level of a venue will have its own band and the doors, windows will be open. So you'll be getting a little taste of everything and everybody. So to see you having fun on the streets of Nashville just brings back so many great memories and it had to be kind of uh you know you had gone before the pandemic so it kind of had to be a little um sentimental for you to see it kind of the way it was where it wasn't as heavily trafficked as it used to be it was sad it just seemed like um it just got hit with left and right they had the tornado then then the pandemic and then and then the bombing so i mean it's just it, it was just so sad i mean it um, just to see everything that that city's been built up to be and um, what, what just happened to you. But I can tell you this from being there, uh, being in Nashville and seeing how strong these people are and uh, their, their work, work ethics. I mean, it's going to come back and I, I, I see it being just as strong, if not stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Nashville is resilient and they definitely will overcome it. And Preceding this single, you had a song called Hollywood Sign. So uh, you're from California. What part? Uh, Northern California, Sacramento area. Um, so that's where I'm at, just north of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually in Bakersfield. I say L.A. because it just has the, the the better sound than Bakersfield to me. But uh, Hollywood Sign, tell us about that. Uh, obviously, we know what inspired it. But what? Uh, yeah. how did it lead to Hollywood Sign into visiting Nashville? You know, people have asked me if I just write about um, places I visited, but it's not. Um, it's more about the experience and something I've felt or, or, or been to or been through. 
And obviously I've spent some time down there in Hollywood or whether it's driving through or shopping or visiting music venues down there. Most uh, people that haven't been there, West Hollywood has a huge music scene. And I mean, Guns N' Roses, The Doors, and many others have started there with their footprint. So in the song Hollywood sign in the choruses, it mentions GNR and The Doors. And I just thought it was really important to mention some of the historical um, music elements that have come out of uh, Hollywood. Um, not to mention all the other creative components that go on there um, and all the beautiful shopping and the beaches that are just a few miles away, et cetera. So I want to tie a couple in with the experience of maybe having a day out on the town and a night out on the town and, and then ending it up there on the hillside of the Hollywood sign. There are hiking trails to get up to the Hollywood sign. It's beautiful up there. And when you get up there, if you haven't gone, I mean, you can see the whole uh, Southern Valley there and LAX with the planes coming and going. So I just thought it would be a nice story to tell. That's really what it came down to. Yeah, it's very beautiful up there. Uh, I know that uh, people trespass onto the sign all the time, but there's a lot of great <laughs> spots out there that you could just sit. It's so peaceful. And Laurel Canyon is another, another one where the Doors used to live, or Jim Morrison at least, and um, be beautiful, of course. And the songs fit, I mean, fit perfectly. Good. Well, thank you. I'm glad uh, you, you listened to it and had a chance to kind of understand it. Yeah, absolutely. And I've lived most of that stuff. I, I was in a band and played the whiskey and all those places. So, oh, see, you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can relate more so than a lot of people probably watching this, but uh, it, it, great times. Definitely great times when it's capable of being fully open and stuff. Have you, um, you know, I, I'm sure... 2020s hit everyone, couldn't tour, couldn't do anything. Have you done a lot of uh, virtual events? And what do you think about the uh, whole um, Save Our Stages? You're the first artist I've asked, asked this, but the whole Save Our Stages festival and, and that campaign, how important is that? From yeah, that, that campaign's new to me. What's the campaign called? Save what? Save Our Stages. It's uh, where they're uh, you know, trying to save the independent venues throughout the country, such as the Whiskey, such as the Ryman, and a lot of those places that you actually sing about. How, uh, uh, being new to you, you, yeah, you know, not sure about how that was working, but, uh, and then back in October, they did a whole Save Our Stages festival where artists, you know, were streamed across uh, America and even the world really just sharing, um, raising funds to save these places. How important yeah. that kind of venue? You no, know, that's that's really important. First off, I'm all about uh, teaching kids and uh, the earlier generations. You know what I mean? Because that's the only the way that we evolve and progress. And I, I think kids need to be involved in both the education component and uh, uh, creative component. Music is creative. So in order to have these, you have to have these independent venues to allow uh, everyone a, a, a foothold to start somewhere, right? I mean, you have the, the Whiskey Go Go and a lot of the other ones down there and uh, everywhere else throughout throughout um, our country. So I, I'm going to look into that and I want to try to get involved somehow or another. I think the more people we have involved, the better. We need a bigger voice. Um, so it's new to me. I don't know how to answer that question other than I, I definitely want to get involved with that um, yeah. because we, we, we all need uh, in, uh, we all need music venues, period. Small, medium, large, whatever it might be. Yeah, it's uh, the 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 festival was headlined by uh, the uh, National uh, Independent Venue Association, NIVA, N-I-V-A. And uh, if you look them up, they'll definitely give you some more information. But yeah, Save Our Stages, it, it went to Congress and everything. So I know that's super important to everybody because, you know, a lot of people still need these venues to be noticed and obviously jobs and everything. So I think it's really important that we keep that. Yeah. I honestly can't believe that it, it's even gotten that to that point with save this, have, have to put something together called save the stage. You think it would just be an automatic thing or um, hopefully uh, the government could, I mean, have something put together to um, keep the art alive. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, music's always going to be around. I mean, that's what everyone falls back onto when there's a, uh, uh, when you're happy, when you're sad, whenever it is, I mean, you go to music, you'll go to TV or whatever it might be. So uh, I, I look forward to learning more about that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what um, any current plans for 2021, as far as any shows, I know they're starting to kick back up here and there, some social distancing shows, some even artists playing with art with the crowd in bubbles, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, you know, um, we're working on, on on putting some shows together. It's just um, 
at all the booking agents and promoters that I'm talking to say that we're, I mean, you have the major labels and the big artists that are obviously priority and uh, they're starting to get booked, but and there's a few festivals in like Arizona and some others that are starting to book as well. So um, we've got our, our uh, hands out um, and, and once they start booking at some of these uh, events, hopefully we'll, we'll be on board and, and start getting on the road again. Um, but we're definitely going to be releasing more materials this year. Um, we'll keep new songs coming out. Um, so hopefully people will follow us on Instagram and Facebook uh, to stay up to date with what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys haven't heard or seen those uh, songs yet, you need to check out those videos, uh, Hollywood Sign and Visiting Nashville out now on digital platforms. Dave, it was a pleasure. Is there anything else you would like to add that I didn't cover? Yeah, I mean, we have um, a new uh, docuseries that we're just starting to release. It's called The Shit Show, All Groupies Wanted. It's on YouTube. The trailer's out and the first episode's out. We're, we're working on finalizing the second episode and then we'll get the third episode going. But it's called The Shit Show, All Groupies Wanted on YouTube. Um, you could follow us at Dave Herrera Live on Instagram and uh, Dave Herrera Music on Facebook. And then obviously our website, uh, my website's DaveHerreraLive.com. So please get out there and support us. And uh, let's learn more about Save the Stages as well, because that's very critical to everybody. I think whether you're a musician or not, you're going to enjoy entertainment. You're going to want to go out there and see people on stages to have a good time and support um, all the artists. So. Absolutely. Would you like to dive a little more in detail into the shit show? Yeah. The shit show all groupies wanted is basically, um, it'll show you the behind the scenes of me and my buddies and my family. And, um, the first episode's called back from Hollywood. So it doesn't, it gives you an introduction to my friends and, um, kind of what we do on a daily basis when we're, we're together, we cause ruckus, uh, we're loud. <laughs> There's drinking involved and obviously lots of music. <laughs> Nothing wrong with any of that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we'll check that out. But Dave, I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure and uh, great meeting you and enjoy the rest of your uh, CRS. Yeah, you too. And uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh -huh.